Excellent. Well, welcome to Vision Night. We're we are so incredibly excited for you to be joining us tonight. And, and as we come together tonight, I don't know if many of you are aware of this, but but as we come together tonight, we come together just a few weeks away from our 12th birthday here at Hoboken Grace. And as, 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 I prepared, as I prepared for tonight, I just spent some time looking back. And, and it's really unbelievable when you look back and see all that God's done over the past 12 years years, all, all the different ways that he's allowed us to be able to, to continue to impact more and more people with this incredible, this incredible message, this unbelievable mission that he's given us. Let, let me just share with you really quickly, just a, a little snapshot of the past 12 years. I'm just going to share with you the, the numbers from, from February of the past 12 years. Years beginning in 2008, which is when we launched, we we launched. We had about 42 people who were gathering consistently as a part of Hoboken Grace. It was really exciting for us at that time. The next year, in 2009, we had 52. That wasn't as exciting for us a year later, and we were wondering if this this thing called Hoboken Grace was ever going to become. A reality, but then God just continued to to lead, continue to guide, continue to to provide. 2010, it was 108. 2011, 252. 2012, 398. 2013, 472. 2014, 522. 2015, 528. 2016, 703. 2017, 881. 2018, 924. 2019, 990. And then it, and then this past Sunday. 1145. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to see how God has just continued, continued to allow us to share this unbelievable message that He's pursuing people with the world around us, that He's pursuing. Them. It's, it's been 12 years of just watching God work and move. 12 years of being able to it's not just talk about helping people find their way back to him, but, but 12 years of actually seeing that happen. Over the past 12, year, 12 years, we've seen 392 people take the step of baptism to go public with the reality. <laughs> of what God's done in their life. We've seen 12 years of, of helping people to, to step into service as a part of the body of Christ and experiencing God using their time and their talents to, to impact the world around them. Over the course of the last 12 years, we've seen 2,346 begin to serve as a part of Hoboken Grace. It's unbelievable. And it hasn't just been the step of, of being used by God in that way. It's, it's also been the step of, of an investment. 12 years of people investing in this mission. Of God using their, not just their time and their talents, but, but their treasures. And, and investing in you, investing in me, investing in this community. Over the past 12 years, we've seen over 3,093 people invest in this mission as a part of Hoboken Grace. It's unbelievable. As we look back, one of the things that, that I think captures Hoboken Grace the most, as a matter of fact, it, oftentimes I'll ask people, what, what is it that you, that you love about Hoboken Grace? One of the first words, if it's not the first word, it's one of the first words that comes out of their mouth is community. And over the past 12 years, we've seen 3,519 people step into a dinner group for the first time. For, for many of those people, for many of those people, many of you who are in this room, for many of those people, it was the first time they'd ever stepped into a community like that. Where they're engaging with those around them about what God was doing and where God was leading, how God was, was working. God has over and over and over again allowed us to be able to share this unbelievable message of who he is 
One of, one of the things that we say almost every week here at Hoboken Grace is that it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done or the mistakes that you've made, that, that God is pursuing you because from the very beginning we wanted to make sure that we shared that truth with as many people as we possibly could. We didn't want to go a single week without sharing that with every single person who walked into our doors. Over the past 12 years, we've had 6,282 first-time guests that we've been able to share that truth with. But from the beginning, it was never just about those who were in this room, was it? It's always been, it's always been about those that God has called us to, our, our community. And one of the things that blew me away, this was the number that shocked me more than, more than any other, was all of the different ways that God has allowed us to be able to love. The impact moments that he's allowed us to have inside of our city and, and community. Let, let me ask, ask you, as you think back on the 12 years, how many times do you think that we've been able to to love, whether in big ways or small ways. You think about our bridge events, what we call our Easter egg hunt, one day, the Christmas exchange. You think about the small ways that we're able to serve at, at the path as we hand out a breakfast bar and just brighten someone's morning. How, how many times do you think God's given us the opportunity to be able to do that? As I, as I was preparing for, for tonight, I had a number in mind. I, I couldn't believe when I actually saw the number. Over the past 12 years, God has allowed us to be able to love in that way over 344,000 times. That's insane. Over 344,000 times. And the reality is, the reality is, is that we, we could sit here tonight and we could spend the entire hour just sharing story after story after story after story. It's amazing. I, I look out and, and I see story after story after story after story of what God's done and the lives that he's, that he's changed. If, if you've never taken the time to go to our website and just listen to the stories that are available on there, you have, you have to do it. it it's just over and over and over again, stories of God's grace and God's mercy and, and transformation. As I look out, I see some of you whose stories are on that site. There's countless stories of what God's done, of God's unbelievable love, of God's unbelievable grace. I think back, I think back to the early stories. I think of stories of of the individuals who actually now are on our, on our staff. I think of, of Rachel's story, who's now our Grace Kids Director, and all that God's done in her life to, for her to be able to impact the little ones that are part of our family in such a powerful way. I think of Nick's story and the incredible transformation. One of the really unique things about Hoboken Grace is that almost half of our directors here at Hoboken Grace were actually baptized as part of Hoboken Grace. I think about Dana's story. Think about how I, I met her along the back wall after a service years ago. She reminded me this week that it was actually 10 years ago. She never dreamed, never dreamed that God would be using her in the way that she is. And you see her on this stage leading us in worship, and helping us to engage God in new ways, in powerful ways. It's unbelievable. You know, Dana didn't start at Hoboken Grace as, as a worship leader. Dana actually started at Hoboken Grace as, as an assistant inside of our office. And God has just constantly just continued to work and move. It's unbelievable. There's story after story after story after story. And it's those stories. It's those stories. And it's that continued spiritual growth. It's that continued growth of our family that, that has led us to where we are tonight and has led, us, has led us to believe that God is calling us to launch what we're calling the Home Initiative. Now, now home, home is it's an interesting 
word. As I, as I said on the video, there are very few words in the English language that carry as much weight as home. Because as we've talked about many times here at Hoboken Grace, at the core of this whole thing, this entire journey, it's, it's about family. It's about home. This is why from the beginning of God's pursuit of us, he's, he's spoken to us about home. Even when you look at the beginning of the story of the nation of Israel and God's pursuit of Abraham, his conversation is about home. Let me, let me take you to that passage, Genesis chapter 12. It says, The Lord has said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. He says, I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. He says, he says but, but it begins it begins with a new home that, that I want to take you to. This is, this is a powerful story. As a matter of fact, next month, we're going to spend a month inside of this story together. And we're going to look at the powerful way that God steps in and says, says I want to show you, I want to take you to a new home. And the reality is, is that at first you think it's about a place. But as you sit with the story and as you watch what God's doing in Abraham's life, you realize that it's actually not about a place at all. It's about a person. You think it's about somewhere. And the reality is, is that God does take Abraham to a new place. But it's not about somewhere. It's about someone. And by the end of the story, the reality is, is that Abraham could have been anywhere and been at home because he had found an experience of home that was far greater than what he'd ever imagined. You see, he'd found his home in God. He'd found the home that his soul had so long craved. And the reality is, is that this, this is what God wants for every single one of us, for us to be able to find our home in him. You see it throughout. You see it throughout the biblical narrative. Listen to what it says in Colossians 2. It says, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. And you see this, this wording. You see this picture, this idea of being rooted in, built on. This idea of, of home. And God's calling every, every one of us to be able to find that in him, Ephesians again speaks to this. He says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And again, he's calling us to this. I want for you to find your home in me. I want for you to know home in me. I want for your roots to grow down. It's, it's a consistent picture throughout scripture. And this is what God, this is what God wants for each and every one of us. This is what we've, this is what we've sought to pursue as Hoboken Grace for 12 years. It's captured so perfectly, this picture, it's captured so perfectly in the words of King David in Psalms where he says, he's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Again, this idea of rooted, built in, grounded in, home, secure, solid. Jeremiah Jeremiah echoes the same thing. He said, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. It's this exact same picture. You see it over and over and over and over again because this is what God wants for every one of us, that we would find home. That those words that that home speaks to those words of love and belonging and security, that we would find that not in a place, but in a person. In him. This has been our pursuit from, from the beginning, that, that we would find that, that we would know that. But not just, not just for us, not, not just that we would experience that, but that but that as a result, we would be able to impact those around us with home. Je Jesus, Jesus actually captures this in, in an amazing and in a profound way. As he's, as he's speaking to his disciples and, he, and he's trying to help them to understand what the kingdom of God is like. And he's trying to help them 
to, to understand this idea of finding home. He takes this picture that we've seen throughout the biblical narrative and he builds on it in an amazing and profound way. Let, let me take you to this passage. It's found in Luke chapter 13. It says this. It says, then Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? How can I, how can I illustrate it? It's like a tiny seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree. And he goes back to that same, that same picture. He says, how do I help you understand what, what, what this journey with God is, is about? He's like, it's something that starts small in you, but, but as your faith grows, it, it grows and it becomes a tree. He goes back to that same picture, the wording of, of David, the wording of, of Jeremiah, this idea of, of being rooted in, built in. He's, it grows and becomes a tree, but it doesn't just impact itself. And in this amazing way, he builds on this picture. He builds on this picture. It's so powerful. He says, he says, it grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He says, it grows and becomes a tree. But it's not just that you find, find home. It, you see, as you find your home in him, it it makes it possible for others to find home as well. It creates space for, for others to find home as well. And I love, I love this picture because as Jesus gives us this, this profound picture, he in so many ways captures our story. For so many of you, the reality is, is that this is this is, your, this is your story. Let, let me ask you something. How many of you, how many of you first found home in community before you realized the incredible home you could find in him? For so many of us, this is, this is our story. It's, it's because of the faith of those who've come before us, and it's because of someone else's faith and, and their willingness to be rooted in and built in and grounded in him and, that allowed us to be able to find home and then to discover that the home we'd always longed for was actually found in him. This, this is our story. This is, this is what we've longed to be, what we've, what we've longed to live, what we've, what we've longed to do. That we would not only experience home in him, but that we would create home for all those around us. That they would finally know that there's a place that they can find and experience home. But as we've, as we've continued to grow here at Hope, and Grace, we, we've encountered a problem. And that problem, that problem is, is this. The branches, in many ways, are full. Those branches where, that we want to extend, where we want to create home and, and create community, those branches, in many ways, are full. And we've done everything that we can humanly possibly do inside this space to be able to create more space for us to be able to share with more people the powerful truth that God is pursuing them, that he's passionate about them, that he loves them. We've tried everything we possibly can, and we've added services, and we added screens, so you can sit in just about any corner of this space and still be able to engage with us. We've moved our kids' ministry from the second floor to the fourth floor, so we could double Grace Kids. We've added it to the third service. We've done everything that we possibly could to be able to expand this space, to create space for people to connect in the hallways. But the reality is this. On our most significant Sundays here at Hoboken Grace, we connect the least. On the most significant Sundays where we want to be able to have the greatest opportunity to extend those branches for people to be able to find a home, for people to be able to engage community, we connect the least. 
And it's not just about the weekends. It's also the fact that in many ways, the branches are just restricted. In order to be able to do anything else on a Sunday, it's extremely difficult for us. As a matter of fact, even as we're coming into tonight, one of the things that, that sometimes people don't know is that, one, we don't own this space. So, some people think that we own this space. As a matter of fact, the CEO of the, of the company who actually owns this space has people frequently ask her if she works at Hoboken Grace. We don't own this space. We rent this space. And when we come in, this is an empty gym. Nothing is set up. It was unbelievable what happened today. This entire space was set up in less than two hours. It was incredible. But it takes an unbelievable amount of work. And being able to coordinate all that needs to happen in order for that to become a reality is very difficult. And it takes unbelievable resources for that to happen. And we find ourselves restricted in so many ways. And we have so many opportunities to be able to build relationships where people ask us about using this space for weddings or, or receptions or, or community events. And we would love to be able to, to seize those opportunities, but rather than being able to seize them, we have to decline them. And there are so many things that we want to be able to do that we're just not able to do. One of the, one of the things that we love is to be able to have have dinner groups come together in this space and to be able to provide childcare while, while dinner groups meet inside of this space. We're only able to do that on a few select Sundays a year. We constantly find ourselves restricted. One of, one of the realities that, that we're facing is that right now inside of Grace Kids, we have about 80 fourth and fifth graders. That's terrifying on so many levels. Over the next two years, over the next two years, those kids are going to graduate out of Grace Kids. We've, we've long dreamed of being able to have a space for our middle school and high school kids to come together. We can't, we can't do it. The branches are restricted. What, when those kids graduate out, what are we going to do? Many of those kids were dedicated on this stage. And we made a commitment to them, didn't we? What are we going to do? The branches, the branches are restricted. Which is why, which is why we believe, we believe that the time has come for Hoboken Grace to further root itself inside of this community. Tw 20 years, 12 years ago, when Anna and I, 20 years, it seems like 20 years sometimes. <laughs> 12 years ago, when, when Anna and I moved to Hoboken, we made a 20-year commitment to this city. No matter what happened with Hoboken Grace, we believe that God had called us to impact and to love this city. When we made that commitment, we didn't think anything of it. As a matter of fact, early on, we seldom shared it. We didn't think it would have any significance in what we were doing and the mission that God had given us. But as we shared it with people, we began to notice that it had incredible power in people's lives. And, and what we found over the, over the past 12 years is that when you live in a place that's so transient, where things come and go, there's incredible power to something that's permanent. And we believe that it's time for Hoboken Grace to further root itself, not just in him, but to further root itself inside of this community. To say to this community that we are here to stay. We're not just temporary, temporarily impacting this community. We're here and we want to impact this community for generations and generations and generations to come. We believe it's time for Hoboken Grace to establish our own space, a space from which we're not just able to love on the weekends, but we're able to love all week long, that we're able to finally step into and engage these opportunities that we've been having to decline, these things that God has us dreaming about, but we haven't been able to actually execute. We believe it's time 
to further root ourselves in this community. And, and as we talk about this, I want to be really clear. I want to be really clear about something. Because I know when we start to talk about space, because of the fact that we are a church, many of you are going to think church building. That's not what we're looking to establish. That's not what the home initiative is about. This is not about how we establish a temple. You, you see, the, the reality is, is that God has said that each and every one of us, as we step into a relationship with Jesus, that the spirit of God lives in us, that we are that temple, that together as a body, we are that temple. We're not looking to establish a space whose doors are only open on the weekend, a space where it's special and only certain things. No, no, we want not to establish a temple. We want to establish a tool. In other words, we want to establish a, a space that allows us to be able to engage in love in all sorts of different ways. We want this to be a space where community events are constantly taking place. We want this to be a space where weddings are happening, where receptions are happening. We want this to be a space where chamber of commerce meetings are happening. We want this to be a space where birthday parties are happening. One of the ways that, that I've talked to our staff about it is that we want this to be a space where when your friend, when your friend attends with you on Sunday morning, they know where the restrooms are, not because we have good signage, but because they were there the night before for a concert. This isn't about our space. This is about our space as a community. A space from which we're able to celebrate our community, love our, our city, impact in, in ways we've only dreamed of. But the reality, but the reality is this. Before, before God does something through us, before God does something through us, he often seeks to first do something in us. And, and as, we, as we step into this and, and as, we, as we look at, okay, how do we root ourselves further in this community? We want to engage this, not first with what God will do through us, but we want to engage this first with what God wants to do in us. And the power of this picture, the power of this picture is, is that it first begins with rooting ourselves in him. And what it is that allows the branches to expand and what it is that allows us to be able to create home for others is that we first find our home. We establish ourselves. We build our lives on him. Which is why as we walk into the home initiative, our primary goal doesn't have anything to do with the space. Our primary goal doesn't have anything to do with funding. Our primary goal doesn't have anything to do with generosity. Our primary goal is all about engagement. Our primary goal is found in the beginning of this verse, that we would be rooted in him. That we would, that we would further dig our roots down into him. That we would further build our lives on him that the branches would expand, that we would create home because each and every one of us has found home in him. Our primary goal, our primary goal is 100% engagement, that every person who's a part of Hoboken Grace would engage God in this question and ask, okay, am I actually finding my home in him or am I just inviting him over? Am I actually finding my home in him or am I just visiting him? Am I actually finding my home? Is he actually the priority in my life or is he just one of the priorities in my life? We want 100% engagement for our roots to grow down into him. It begins, it begins with what God wants to do in us. Our secondary goal of what God will do through us is that over the course of the next two years, we want to expand our generosity from 6 million to 12 million. We want to be able to expand our generosity from our current giving of 6 million over the course of two years to 12. As a part of that, as I said, the first six million is actually what we already give. It's our current generosity. If you're currently investing in the mission here at Hoboken Grace, you're part of that. You're a part of that six. 
And we want you to know that your current giving, it, it matters in this. Sometimes people call this the, the general fund. It's anything but general. Your current investment, what you currently give, your generosity is what makes everything that we've talked about possible. And so the first six of that goal of 12 is our current giving. In addition to that, we want to expand so that we have five million that will go specifically towards the establishment of this space. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're sitting there thinking, wait, Chris, you can barely buy a brownstone in Hoboken for $5 million. And you're right, this isn't gonna cover all of it, but what it is gonna do is allow us to have a base from which we're able to make financially responsible decisions to be able to establish a space like this moving forward. And five million of that 12 million goal is gonna go specifically towards this space. Now again, I know, I know when we're talking about this, for some of you, this is gonna be very difficult to picture because we're a church, so you picture a church building. I actually wanna share with you, I wanna share with you how one of our partners has done exactly what we dream of doing. They built what's called the Relevant Center. I want to show you some of the photos just so you get an idea of what we're thinking and maybe shift your mindset a little bit further. One of the first things you'll notice as you look at the Relevant Center is that the name of the church isn't anywhere on the building. Why? Because it's not just a church building. And so they went out of their way to make sure that nowhere on the outside was there this church name so that people would feel comfortable as they engage it, as they step into the space, no matter who they are, no matter where they've been, no matter what they've Done. As you go inside the space, you see that the space is optimized for connection and that the signage, one of the things that they were really intentional about is that they wanted to make sure that it wasn't just church signage everywhere so that you, you rent this for your wedding or you, you get this for your wedding and then you step in and you're in the midst of all sorts of church signage. So all the signage is electronic so that they're able to change it at any time, no matter who it is that's using the space. You see that it's optimized for connection. Even when you look at the auditorium, everything is designed to be as, as flexible as possible so it can be set up as a theater setup or it can be set up with tables if there's going to be conferences inside the space. They've got another space that's a little bit smaller than this. Again, set up to be flexible as you look at whether it can be set up like this or with tables. As, as you look at the blueprint of it, one of the things that's really interesting, I was talking with this partner about a month ago, and he said, one of the things that was interesting as we started this is that people thought when we established this space that we would no longer set up and tear down. He said, we actually set up and tear down more after we've established this space because there's so many people using this space. He said, this room in particular has been completely taken over by our Chamber of Commerce. He said, Chris, do you know the opportunities that are becoming available to us to love our city when the leaders of our city are walking into our space every week? The impact of it has already begun to be seen. It's amazing the ways that they're able to love and engage their city as they've established this. Now, let me, let, me, let me just share this. Go ahead and jump back to the first photo, because some of you looked at that and said, wait, 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 wait. And you're right, right? If you look back at the, this is in Nebraska. <laughs> Thank God we don't live in Nebraska. It's not going to look like this. You understand that, I understand that, but I want for you to be able to understand the way that we're thinking. I want for you to be able to understand the difference between a tool and a temple. Six, six million is our current giving, continuing to impact the city that we've been impacting the city, continuing to love, continuing to see people find their way back to God. Five is the establishment of this space. But, and I know some of you are sitting there saying, wait, Chris, six plus five doesn't equal 12, and you're already worried. Look, look, I, I know that. I know that. Uh, and there is an additional one. And that one is, is to go towards taking our current impact to an entirely different level. We, you see, we don't want to go through this and tell our community, you know what? We want to love you. You know what? We're doing this so that we can love you. You know what? We've got this great thing planned, and then we're going to love you. So what we're doing is that as we engage this, we're going to take our impact to an entirely different level. Not then, now. 
And so that one is specifically to take our impact locally and globally to levels that it has never been. Entirely set aside to be able to impact our city and our world. We, we believe that God wants to do something in us. That God wants to do something through us. So that we can begin to love in ways that we've only ever been able to dream of. So that we can continue to see God using us to help people find their way back to him. That journey begins tonight. But as I said, it doesn't begin with what he's going to do through us. It doesn't begin with what we're going to give, our generosity just yet. It begins with our heart. It begins with what he wants to do in us. And so tonight, as we move forward, and as the band comes back, we're going to do something that we haven't done in a very long time here at Hoboken Grace. As you notice throughout the room, you see the communion tables that we usually have set up. Tonight's going to be a little bit different, because as we walk through these next two songs, I want to invite you to move towards one of those communion tables. But as you move towards that, you're going to see that there's going to be someone there to actually serve you. You see, we want tonight to take communion, to engage communion together as a family. We want to further experience the home that we found together to further experience the home that we found in him. And as we begin this journey tonight, as we begin this journey tonight, I want to invite you, I want to invite you to invite him to do something in you. For you to go to him and say, God, I want to make sure that you are my home. And as we move through these next two songs, as you're ready, I want to invite you to go and to take communion. And, and communion is all about remembering, remembering what Jesus has done for us, how his body was broken for us, how his blood was, was shed for us. But as you remember, I want for you to specifically remember the one who led you home. To remember how his body was broken so that he could lead you home. And then to remember the Father who welcomed you home, who wrapped his arms around you. When you least expected it, the Father who welcomed you home. As we begin this journey, it's all about what God wants to do in us about sinking our roots down into his love, further building our lives on him, further establishing that he and he alone is our home. And so I invite you to go and remember the one who led you home. Remember the father who welcomed you home. And may we, may we continue May we continue to build our lives on, to find our home in Him. Father, I thank you for how you for years have not only allowed us to find home in you, but, but how for years you, you have allowed us, you have used us to create home for others. As we come together tonight, we want, we want to further root ourselves in you so that you might use us for the branches to extend, so that you might continue to use us, that you might expand our ability to help others find home as well. In Jesus' name, amen.